The house is located in the inner north suburb of Brunswick. Brunswick is one of the oldest suburbs in Melbourne, known for its bluestone and brick quarries, which have now been filled up to form a lot of the parks that you see here today. My name is Stephanie Kittigan, co-director of Placement Studio, and I was the architect working on Brunswick House, located on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. The client had lived in the house for almost a decade and was quite settled into the warmth and the feel of the house. He wasn't looking for anything too pretentious. So the brief was to create a design that was uh, quietly clever and robust. It's quite a narrow block, only about five meters wide. And the tactic that was used to tackle the plan was really to rectify a defunct terrace typology common to the era. So the bricks are laid in a stack bond and this accentuates the verticality in the space due to the verticality of the pattern. New Brick Artisan was the brick material used to pay homage to Brunswick's quarries. Choosing the New Brick was a really great experience. Brickworks is quite collaborative in the way they work through specifications. Even when we were on site and working through how to apply the brick to the floor as well as the wall, Brickworks were quite uh, involved in getting that format to work for us. The new brick artisan has a lovely tactility to them and when seen en masse creates a really nice textural quality and it pairs subtly with the terracotta tiles that we use in the kitchen and there's actually a really nice contrast to the blue tiles that we use in the bathroom. The front bedroom was maintained as the main bedroom. The fireplace was left unfinished just to retain that story of the space. Moving through to the center of the house, there is a release and a decompression through a double height ceiling and this makes way to the dining area. The dining area then leads down through two hallways, one to access the bathroom, the other hallway is a galley kitchen. Both these hallways lead down to the living room. The mezzanine is a multi-purpose space. It could function as a rumpus, a second bedroom, um, an office space, but ultimately works really hard in helping to zone the separate dining and living. The living room then opens up to the backyard, which is essentially a courtyard sandwiched between a rear pavilion and the living room facade. A semi-underground water tank due to the levels of the site was cleverly hidden by dense planting. Over time, the greenery will sort of just take over the fences and become this tiny little nook of green for the client. The crucial design element in responding to the narrow nature of the site was to allow light to penetrate into the centre of the building. Now that was done via the use of a central courtyard which allows that north light to sort of get right into the dining area. Because we were working within such a small space we needed the joinery to do a lot of heavy lifting uh, to make this space work well. So the joinery creates seamless transitions between the living, the dining, the mezzanine by creating these overlapping lines. We try to steer away from artificial finishes and select materials that were more natural. In turn, that would stand the test of time. When I look around, I am most proud of how we've managed to fit so much into such a small space. But everything done quite gracefully and with refined sense of detail. It's hard to pick a favourite spot because the spot is sort of one space, 
uh, but I would say it's a tie between the back living room banquette and sitting in the dining room looking out to the back garden. Quite pleasing and quite timeless.